What is up guys, Joe Snow right here. So in today's video, I'm going to clarify the problem with Transmac and Power ISO on Windows when trying to open the DMG file of the iOS 10.3. So a lot of you uh, told me in the comment section and I uh, snapshot some um, comments, not all of them of course, that you weren't able to open the uh, DMG file using Transmac because it gives you error about HFS volume not being found. So um, uh, I decided to test this myself. Now, on my Mac, I had no problem opening the uh, IPSW, so uh, I decided to do it on Windows to see what's the problem. Uh, normally, I blamed it on the fact that iOS 10.3 changed the file system format to the new file system that Apple introduced in 10.3, and I thought Transmac is um, actually corrupted due to that. But it turned out people simply cannot open the correct file for some reason. Let me show you. Now. Inside the IPSW, you need to take the biggest file. If I take the smallest one, there are three files. There are two small files and one big one. So if I take this small file, it's the same as a DMG file, but if I open it in Transmac, I get the error people are getting, usually. No Mac HFS volume found. But if you take the file that you should take, the normal file that you need, and uh, you extract it, it's one gigabit uh, in size, but I'm going to show you the file is starting with no problem. So people are simply using the wrong file. Uh, I didn't update the Transmac. Transmac it's, um, is, is at the same version. I mean, Transmac didn't even get an update uh, ever since, I don't know, a couple of months ago. So um, there's no problem with the new format. It's just that people don't open the correct file. Now, as you can see on the IPSW, it says, uh, let me try to get the name of it. It says clearly iPhone uh, 4.0, which is iPhone 5 and 5C, 32-bit, iOS 10.3, and it's the latest version of iOS 10.3 beta. It's beta 2. So there is no problem about this, and I'm going to show you in the build manifest right away. But let's uh, wait for this to uh, extract. Alright, so it started copying from 7-zips folder into my desktop. Alright, so the file was extracted and I'm going to show you again. If I use the wrong file from the IPSW, you're going to see that I'm getting exactly the same error people are getting. No Mac HFS volume found. Because this one is really encrypted. But if I open the file that I extracted, the 1 gigabit and uh, 73 file, you can see that I'm able to do so with no problem. So I don't know why, why people are getting that error, probably and most likely they're using the wrong file. But yeah, if you're not able to, to open the correct file and to follow the correct instructions from the video, please avoid the video itself. Because yeah, in order to manage to bypass iCloud, you must at least know how to open a file. So um, again, to recap this video, there is no problem with um, with Transmic itself, with iOS 10.3 itself, it's just people that are opening the wrong file. So let me try to copy this setup up to my desktop to show you that everything works as it should. So as you can see, everything is in here. Now, if I want to extract it, of course I can, ex I can extract it as well. I can expand it so I can uh, make it read and write. So as you can see, the expanding process started with no problem, but this will take a lot, so I'm not going to go into it in this video. So uh, yeah, please make sure you're opening the correct file. There are three files inside the IPSW, and as I said in every video, you should look at the size. The size is the one that matters. The biggest file that you need is the um, actually the DMG that has the setup up into it. All the rest, this smaller one, 25 or 24 megabit files, are RAM disks. These are encrypted, but the main one that you need is not. So I really hope you understood what's the problem with the iOS 10.3, and I really hope you will try again with the correct file. If it still gives you errors, you must likely have some problems with your Transmic, but I'm going to also test on 64-bit. Maybe the, that's the problem, but on 32-bit devices, it seems not to be any problem. So uh, there shouldn't be any problem on 64-bit as well. So yeah, this is basically it, guys. I really hope this will um, will clear up any doubts you have about the iOS 10.3 being encrypted or not. And till the next time, do not forget to subscribe to stay updated and peace out.